Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, this lecture will be dedicated to introduction to triangles. Um, actually, it's about terminology, most of it at least, with very, very little uh, proofs or theorems or anything like this. Uh, triangles um, are pretty complex, actually, topic. So that's why I would like to dedicate this relatively short lecture to basically to terminology. All right, so what is triangle? It's a geometrical object which contains three different segments and uh, they are connected in such a way that the uh, beginning of each segment corresponds to the uh, end, end of the previous segment and its beginning is corresponding to the previous segment ending, etc., etc. So we have three vertices and three segments or sides of triangle. So these are sides, side, side, and side. And this is vertex. These are angles, obviously. So that's how we start. This is the definition of triangle. Now, what kind of triangles do we uh, consider as separate classes, if you wish? Well, there are many different ways to classify the triangles. The first one is how the sides are compared. Well, if you have all three sides equal to each other, it's called equilateral. Equilateral. Equilateral triangle means all sides are equal. Okay. If only two sides are equal, then they are usually called um, either legs or maybe just sides. And uh, the side which is not equal to both of those guys. So this is leg and this is leg. Uh, is usually called the base. Um, and if we are talking about vertex, it's not just any vertex of this particular triangle. Usually it's the, it's the vertex which connects to equal legs. Unless specifically um, said that vertex at the base, left or right or whatever. And uh, this triangle is called isosceles. That's another word. All right. Um, so that's how triangles can be differentiated or classified based on uh, the lengths of their sides. Now, how about uh, angles? Well, angles can be, as you know, right, acute, or obtuse. And that's why triangles with a right angle are called right triangle. Um, this is called acute angled triangle or just acute. And this is called obtuse angled triangle or just obtuse triangle. So these are three categories which we um, based on um, the angles. Now, that's about it, about classification of triangles. Um, now, what's inside the triangle? What kind of elements of the triangle we, we will be considering? Well, besides vertices and, uh, and sides, there are different lines or segments inside the triangle which we will be dealing with. Now, first of all, let's consider a side and its middle point, and then the line which contains the opposite vertex with this middle point. So this is ABC, and 
this is let's say m a m congruent to m c so these two segments have the same uh, lengths now the b m line is called median all right so we know how to divide the side now let's talk about the angle what if instead of this we will have these two angles the same so the end uh, bisect is bisecting the angle well if angle uh, a a b m is equal to angle to m b c well congruent obviously um, then b m is bisector or angle bisector so these are different lines. Now, angle bisector uh, might, in some cases, coincide with the median. Well, sometimes not. It depends. Um, and finally, if if BM is perpendicular to AC, then BM is called altitude or height. So, um, let's consider our triangle is um, such that all these three different lines do not coincide with each other. So, let me use this, and I will put, okay, these are three lines, M, N, and P, let's see. So, B, M, in this case, if it divides A, C into equal parts, B, M will be medium, medium. BN in this particular case, let me correct this to the letter N. Would be an angle bisector. So this angle is equal to this angle. So these are uh, congruent angles. And finally, uh, I will change M to P. So BP is perpendicular to AC. So BP is an altitude or, so this is the right angle. So these are three main components of the triangle. Now, another thing which is sometimes also considered as a, as a separate line, in this case, it's not a segment which is inside um, the triangle. It, it's a line, actually. Line which is perpendicular to a side at its middle point. Now, this is called uh, medium uh, midpoint bisector. So it bisects this, line, this, uh, this side in two halves and it's perpendicular to it. Usually perpendicular midpoint bisector. That's how usually the full name of this of this line. It's a perpendicular midpoint bisector if you wish. I mean there are many different there is no like standard here.
So these are important lines. Uh, let's just leave aside midpoint bisector. Um, I would like to, to talk about these three main, main components. Um, uh, angle bisector, median, and, uh, and the altitude. What's important is that if you remember whenever I define something, I pay specific attention to two very, very important components of a uh, logical system which we are building. Existence of what I define and uniqueness. So I have defined, let's say, a bisector or a median. Now, is it unique? Is it, does it exist, first of all? And if it does, is it unique? Well, let me just concentrate on median first. Uh, I would like to prove, actually, that uh, the median does exist and it's unique. And it seems to me like an obvious fact. However, everything, even the obvious facts, need to be proven or taken as an axiom, as you know. There is no axiom about uh, median being, uh, uh, being uh, existing and, and being a unique uh, in a triangle. There is no such axiom. So we somehow should derive this particular fact that median exists and uh, it's unique from certain axioms which we accept. Now, um, again, if you remember in one of the prior lectures I was uh, actually talking about Hilbert and his system of uh, 20 or 21 axioms, and among them we should really find something which could be, which could be used to prove this particular fact. All right, so let's talk about median. So first of all, uh, let me say that there is a midpoint between two points uh, on the line, between A and C, and it's unique. Well, um, existence of the midpoint is really uh, a difficult topic, and I don't want actually to... Uh, to get deeper into this. Um, as I was saying before, the elementary things are most difficult to prove because there is nothing to be based upon. Uh, but its uniqueness actually is a relatively simple thing. Let's say you have a segment. In this case, it's AC. And let's consider you have two different points, M and N, which both uh, are midpoints of this segment. Now, what does it mean that they are midpoints? Well, AM has the lengths equal to output lengths of AM equals to lengths of MC, since M is a midpoint. And similarly, I can say that lengths of AN is equal to lengths of MC since N is the middle point. Now I have to prove that M and N are exactly the same, um, the same points. Well, let's consider they are different, so we will try to prove uh, the theorem from, from, from the uh, inverse statement and basically prove that the inverse statement is, is, is false. Well, let's uh, uh, have the lengths of these three uh, small segments from A to M, from M to N, and from N to C as X, Y, and Z. Now, what does it mean that what does it mean that length of AM is equal to length of MC? Well, AM is X. MC is a combination of MN and MC, so it's equal to Y plus Z. Right? So that's what this particular equation means. Now, this equation means length of AN, which is x plus y, equals NC, which is z. Now, from these two equations, what can we actually uh, derive? I would like to come up with some kind of contradiction that this is basically impossible. Well. Uh, if, if x, y, and z are 
uh, are if, if actually is if y is not zero. Well, let's try to do it. We can substitute uh, z into the first equation, and we will have x plus y. Uh, sorry, x equals y plus, and instead of z, we will substitute its value, x plus y. Well, obviously, we can subtract x from both sides of this equation, and we will have 0 on the left, and x and x will nullify each other. We will have 2y, from which y is equal to 0. So, from these two things, we come up with y equals to 0, uh, which means that if we consider that these two points, m and n, are not exactly uh, coinciding with each other, uh, then we have the contradiction, then the, the length between them is equal to zero, which means they have to really find, coincide. So this is um, a very elementary proof that there is one and only one midpoint uh, of uh, any segment. Now, how can it be used in this particular case? Well, obviously, since M, which is the midpoint of AC, uh, unique, so it's just one point. Now B is a given point in the triangle, and now we go back to the axioms that if you have two uh, points, there is one and only one line which contains them. That implies that the median is actually unique. Now, uh, with angle bisector, it's actually exactly the same thing. So instead of halves of segments, I have to consider halves of the angle, uh, which also have their own measures. So instead of lengths of segments, I should put measures of angles. And the, the, the proof is exactly the same thing. Now, how about the height? Height is a little bit more complex. Why can't we have two different perpendiculars from the same point outside of the line dropped on the line. Well, again, it goes back to the axioms. Um, uh, it goes actually even simpler, actually, it goes, you, you don't have to go through all the Hilbert axioms. You can go to Euclid, uh, Euclid's fifth postulate. So if you remember, uh, the postulate has that if you have two lines uh, crossed with another line, and if these angles, some of these angles is less than uh, two right angles, then they have to really cross. Um, and same thing on this side. They would cross, these lines will cross wherever this sum is less than uh, two straight angles. But in this case, we have two straight angles um, equal to each other, which means the sum of these two angles is equal to two straight, uh, two, two right angles, which means that these two lines cannot cross each other. So it actually corresponds to the fifth postulate of, uh, of Euclid, that you cannot really have two different lines dropped from the same point outside of the line, on the line, and perpendicular to the line. So that actually is um, how you prove that the, the altitude is unique in, in a triangle. It's actually very, <laughs> I'm trying to emphasize once and again that some elementary properties are more difficult to prove. You have to really know your axioms, what you can and what you cannot use. For instance, I cannot use, for instance, in this particular case, that the sum of angles in a triangle are supposed to be 180 degrees. Um, because this is a much later theorem, which is proved after many other properties are, are, are proven. Because if I can use this, then obviously these two angles are right angles, so it's already 180 degrees, so there is nothing left for this angle, which means these two rays supposed to be, uh, these two segments supposed to coincide with each other. But they cannot use this particular property because 
it would break the logical system of axiom, then the initial theorems, which are proven only based on the axioms, and then the second level and the third level, etc. So we are building this building of logical conclusions only into one direction, only upwards, if you wish, um, from the axioms to more and more sophisticated theorems. We cannot use the theorem which is significantly above our level, wherever we are, to prove it. Because that would mean that we will have a, a logical loop, which is absolutely no knowing mathematics. All right, whatever, uh, what other uh, interesting lines uh, I missed? Uh, well, there is a, um, yeah, one more actually thing. This is called mid segment. The line, the segment which, uh, which connects two middle points of two sides, it's called mid segment. Mid segment. Uh, we will have certain problems related to properties of mid segments. Well, basically, that's it. It's, uh, again, it's a very introductory um, lecture about triangles, what kind of triangles exist and what elements um, we will be dealing with. Um, there is basically a, a, a very descriptive um, notes uh, for this particular lecture on the website. And uh, I do recommend to go to, uni uh, to unizor.com um, not only to uh, study these lectures, but also um, for parents, for instance, and supervisors to get uh, engaged in uh, supervising the educational process of their children and student, students because we can, uh, they can actually use exams and, and tests. There are scores. So I do recommend actually to sign in as, as the real user of the system, not just a lecture watcher. Um, that would help in, in, in a very important uh, educational process. All right, so in next lectures I will start going into more details about triangles, but this is just an introduction. Uh, thank you very much.